It's now break on Rise News and it's time for the press preview. First, we look at what's on the front pages of the papers. And as usual, we start with our sister publication, This Day. If any will call it the newspaper of records, the paper of records, that's what he usually calls it. All right, uh, that's before we welcome him. This Day, what's this day saying? Uh, it says, don't present Muslim running mates. Uh, the Christian Association of Nigeria can. Uh, Northern Christian elders, one Tinibu and Atiku, with about four riders. Let's look at what the riders are saying. It's a threat to fragile peace, unity of Nigeria. Babachir, Nigerians conscious of um, ethno religious factors in politics. El Rufai, competence vital for running mate, not religion, uh, because he's one of the people fingered to be able to get the vice presidential slot. Or Shimbajo promises to support Tinibu. Well, does he really have a choice? Well, Emmanuel will tell us. Uh, you look at that picture, and then under court, sentences three to death for killing Fashoranti's daughter. All right, and just below the logo, you see alleged $50 million fraud slash sale of assets, Wiki orders trial of Amechi and Cole, uh, the governorship candidate of APC. In reverse, it has three riders. Aims to make APC Quebec candidate unelectable. In retaliation, APC nudges PDP's flag bearer with EFCC. Is that nudges? Yeah, that's nudges. All right. Uh, just and then above the this day logo, after failed presidential bids, APC gives a Babio Omahi senatorial tickets you can find that on page 14 i and ken were discussing that senatorial seat earlier on the program all right uh, let me have ken all right uh, read the next paper okay the punch newspaper it's leading with apc may unveil tinubu's running mate on wednesday uh, party focuses on northeast our massacre churches record low turnout beef up security the Christian Association of Nigeria holds a special prayer. Kaduna, Rivers, 30 others attract zero foreign investments in the first quarter of 2022. And blackout worsens as grid collapses for the fifth time in 2022. Oh boy. All right. Um, the nation. Presidency, APC, PDP, heighting surge for running mates uh, with two riders pdp committee to meet south 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 east caucuses uh, competence knowledge of economy may determine apc uh, uh peak right uh, that's article's picture there well three to hang for killing fashioranti's daughter and then the main headlines tinimbu visits amechi he's really been busy visits amechi Belo, Umahi, Abio. Belo has given him his uh, campaign office. Abio in reconciliation move with two riders. Kogi governor donates campaign office, yes, to flag bearer. Governors, ACF chair, others hail Tinubu's victory at primary. Week others, prosecution of Amechi call over alleged 50 million deal. Uh, what again? Or oh, what church massacre was messaged to Akiridudu? This is what showing Kai is saying. I wonder what message that is. Okay, what's the next paper again? Okay, uh, let's take a look at the Tribune. And it's leading with our attack. Southwest governors declare three day mourning. Suspected herders kill 11 in Benway State. And Ekiti Pole, Inspector General of Police, deploys four AIGs, three CPs and mobile force commanders as there's more in the tribune northeast favored to produce tinubu's running mate uh, apc legacy party struggle for slot and democracy day nigerians must remain resilient committed to democratic ideals that's according to governors and so that report is on page 23. continue again okay uh, let's take a look at the international papers uh, the Daily Express, nothing off table to crush strike, that's in the UK. Uh, moving on further, The Independent, uh, Britain killed fighting in 
Rus in Ukraine, rather, as uh, so the former British soldier Jordan Gatley, who was shot dead in the eastern Donbass region, as according to his father. Uh, moving on from the independence, uh, still in the independent, rather, a uh, Tory rift over Johnson's plan to override protocol. Uh, there's more. Uh, the next paper is the eye. Uh, Rwanda flights may not get off the ground. Uh, that flight is supposed to take off tomorrow, Tuesday, but uh, groups and activists have been pushing in court. We wait to find out what's next. And finally, Financial Times, uh, Tories attack Johnson with a bit to re rip up Northern Ireland trade deal. Go on. Okay, uh, for the press preview, let's bring in Emmanuel Bello. Good morning, Emmanuel. Uh, this day says, uh, on your marks. Mike, that's actually right. I was actually reading. Here are the uh, 17 finalists. I didn't get the, uh, the papers for today. So I was actually reading the one of yesterday. Oh. Until... Uh, 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 also told me that well okay we, we do have these ones here now so uh, 17 finalists Emmanuel um, some popular faces uh, we're not sure of some others but I can't recognize um, Al Mustafa Showare Tinubu uh, Obi Peter Obi Atiku Abubakar Kwankwaso and the rest I can't really tell um, how's it going to turn out I would should we expect some of these other little parties to merge with the big ones well uh, good morning Ken. Uh, in the good morning morning it's democracy you. day the, the holiday or the democracy day of yesterday the so road is the road was blocked as i was coming here by the way uh, yeah okay i think it's all in the mood of uh, trying to it happens here in the nation capital but then uh on to serious matters now the issue of you know uh, the candidates uh kenneth like you said some of the faces are not very recognizable but uh, what this day has done uh, is what um, you know. Every good uh, good journalism should be doing now, which is helping the voter, you know, make up their mind. You know, helping them with the information that will they need to be able to take the right decision. And so we're putting faces on uh, the names now, uh, and then of course uh, the, the numbers too are there. You see them, uh, the whole uh, number of them there and their faces. Uh, if you don't recognize them, can it? It should be because not many of them are very visible on the national level. Al Mustafa, of course. Uh, it's someone that's uh, you know uh, you regaled us and the history of today the the, 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 the June 12th celebration itself <laughs> revolves around uh, in a way around his uh, the, the stories around Al Mustafa so most when most people see him, of course they remember those uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the kind of the dramas and the history of uh, what we are commemorating uh, between yesterday and today that's the June 12th uh, celebration but it's all about democracy and it doesn't get better than the presidential race. Uh, this is democracy at its best. Uh, these are men who have gone through this, uh, the primaries. Uh, most of the, some of the primaries looked very credible. Uh, the the cont contestants were there. Uh, there was some counting done and, of course, a lot of sorting out and all of that, and then some declaration. It's the best you can hope for in the kind of democracy uh, that we are experiencing uh, here. The uh, problem will be when people are imposed on people, and it doesn't look as if these men were any kind of imposition. Uh, you might say that those primaries were, you know, there were a lot of a lot of exchange of money, if you wish, and some kind of horse trading and a lot of backyard work. In it. But it's primaries all the same. You know, the act of people coming together, buying forms. Um, you know, we are doing the most we can to sustain democracy, and this is the, the, one of the best way to deepen it is the electoral process. Mm -hmm. INEC is already promising that it's going to have a credible election. The parties too have done their bit. Uh, by staging those um, very, very, you know, uh, ceremonious kind of uh, events, the primaries, and we saw candidates who bought form. Uh, they got screened. Uh, they got. Uh, they went to the venue. Uh, they were declared, and some of them, you know, stepped down. Some uh, were angry, but you, you, it's almost rank or free in some of the parties. Like in the APC, you see many of them, you know, really hugging. Uh, uh, you know, uh, accepting defeat, you know, giving their, the, the, the supporting the, the flag there and all of that. So th this looks like the kind of democracy that uh, we're, as, as if our democracy has grown. And uh, on, the, on democracy, then we need to reflect on how far we've gone. Uh, have we learned the lessons of the past? Are mm. we going to see better elections? Are the votes going to count? Now, these are the men that are going to this race. So, yes, this day is right on your marks, and the race starts, the whistles will be blowing, and then the next few weeks will be very interesting. 
Very interesting indeed. So on this day, uh, Bakare says, I confidently wear my zero vote as a badge of honor. Actually, he said he used SMS to, to talk to delegates uh, for them to vote for him. Quite interesting. Uh, and you take that in your stride, you know, what do you make of that? And Oshie Bajo, others to Nigerians on June 12, use democracy to strengthen national unity. How can this be done? And then, of course, four, four people go zero votes there. Uh, 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 Rogers Okoroja, Jack Reach, uh, Tunde Bakari, and uh, Mokelo. Four of them go zero. But, 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 uh, 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 Today, Bakris is wearing it as a badge of honor. Well, I mean, I, I, at this point, I, it doesn't really matter how he wears it. But if he says it's a badge of honor, well, it, uh, but it's, it's okay. It, it's all right. It was, it was a process he participated in. But in the, we're seeing an emergence of a certain kind of reaction by people who lost, you know, uh, in, on the field. They are not. Uh, you, you don't see too much bitterness. You see yeah. some of them. You see them actually, Koji State Governor, for instance, donating his office. His campaign uh, to, office. His campaign office to Tinubu and say you can use this place. So um, it's like there's, where, maybe there's a new thing happening. There's a new day altogether. You know, in the past, it's all, it was all about rancor. It was all about bitterness. At this point, you'll be hearing also of press releases. People complain that they've been, um, you know, short change and all that, and they've been rigged out. Uh, but apart from some states, in some states too, you are having those kind of you are having the kind of crisis. So what does that tell you about the APC and the, what they did at their, at their presidential primary? Well, like it's it, this actually a testimony to the fact that you know contestants were able to say, look, okay, we're okay with what has happened. We're ready to even work with him. And Tinubu too has done a lot of work. You know, going around those people, um, and, you know, massaging their ego, visiting them, telling them there's that telling picture of Tinubu hugging. Uh, Osi Banjo and everything. He needs to do all of that. We discussed that in the on Friday. So these are the ways um, these parties uh, or you, be, be, be contestants are coping with it. Some are attributing it to the act of God, like Tunde Bakari, saying that there's a better day someday ahead of him. So, um, but what we're seeing is an imagined scenario where uh, contestants are not all that too bitter. Really, actually, I think everybody's tired. Everybody just wants to see uh, maybe some progress. How we can just move on. Uh, usher in a better day, a better leader. I think that's the biggest uh, crisis now uh, for most political uh, watchers, how uh, to have those elections and then, of course, especially the issue of running mates are still, you know, there is, is still an issue. So I think for now, uh, the contestants seem to be, you know, coming to terms with it. Uh, maybe a, 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 apart from the initial shock, uh, the jolting that most, most of them got, Amechi, for instance, we saw a picture of him visiting the president and um, Lawan to visiting the president. Maybe um, there's some kind of closure, some kind of healing, some kind of understanding that, well, this is the end of the road. As far as the presidential, their presidential dreams are concerned, uh, they want to focus on what is the big picture now, which is uh, how to usher in a new day. And speaking of day, the, the power grid has been down. I'm, I'm not sure if it's back up now, Emmanuel. The fifth time in 2022, we're in the sixth month. Should we expect more? What do we do about power? Yeah, can I, incidentally, we also discussed this last Friday, power. And uh, we saw then, of course, there were all those back and forth, the excuses given by both the federal government and then uh, the, the private sectors involved in power pr pr production generation distribution also giving their reasons. Some of them talking about monies they be owed. And of course, the federal government talking about uh, some kind of collapse. And, but we're still seeing that. I, I think for now, I don't know about you, Indy and Kenneth, most people have actually given up on, um, on, on electricity. I mean, they, they, they don't, no, people don't even expect to, to have, uh, I think where, where I stay, we just have light for like a day or two, and then that's it. But people even have, some other people have uh, well, like more I terrible do. stories to, uh, to tell. So um, what Nigerians are doing is, um, I, there's some apology, they are coming from this course, but not many people are really ready to listen to all of that. I think Nigerians have gone past that. And I'm wondering what the next, um, uh, you know, dispensation will bring with the hope that whoever is going to be the next uh, country leader must take on the challenge of electricity. And um, this government will tell you this, they've done a lot, they've thrown money at it, uh, but the privatization has happened, they've done their best and all of that. And yet, uh, the forces of darkness seem to be still having their way uh, round. So I'm sure Ken will not want to hear that from you, but that's by the way <laughs> he doesn't believe in darkness. <laughs> All right, but it's, it's so intractable. By the way, uh, you live where you get light two, two days. You say in a week, I get light steadily, but it's you reduced do? Okay, now. Well, I do, hmm. but it's reduced, and it's because of this issue. I, that makes me wonder. 
because there was this talk about the cement steel, you remember? So, is this still on? Well, I mean, like I said, if you look at the electricity sector, like it, it, it needs, you know, you need to actually, like you say, it's intractable. Some of the problems, I work very closely with the, with the former minister in that sector, and I try to even get a knack or a grasp of what is going on. And I can assure you that uh, apart from the, the crisis called political uh, will uh, from the federal government, <laughs> the power sector is one that is, in, you know, it's really, really a mesh. And the problem is so deep-seated. Um, they, it, will, it will require some real thinking out of the, some people have been suggested that maybe, just maybe, we should consider other alternative uh, source of energy. That too is, uh, you know, being considered by the power ministry, but those problems uh, continue to, to persist. Uh, we've had changes of ministers in that sector. Yes. Uh, we've had all sorts of things. The federal government seems to be very tough when it comes to changing uh, the, the, the ministers heading the sector, but again and again, you've seen this power. Uh, uh, the darkness uh, uh, persists, and, and now you, you even have discourse apologizing to the, to the rest of the country. But they have to go beyond apologies and come up with policies and programs that we just give us life. A country can be bigger than its power supply. That's as simple as that. Good way to end it, Emmanuel. Thank you so much.